You know, sometimes you don't lose a relationship. You were set free from it. And thank God you were set free. Because a lot of times we become so attached to individuals and relationships that we don't know how to let go. We start to become blind to the fact that this is not best for us. And inevitably it's going to end. And when it ends, when that breakup happens, it's still hurtful. It's still a struggle. And it could leave a very lasting impact for a lot of people who don't eventually get the healing they need from it. But I want to help you understand or gain the perspective of how this might be a blessing for you. This might be a setup. Not even might be. It is a setup for you to receive greater in your life. Now, what that greater looks like can be various things, okay? But I need you to understand the blessing in the breakup and, and why, why it was a blessing. And one of the first things you got to realize is a lot of times that relationship became too toxic and stressful. You know, there's a quote I have on the internet that says, relationships are supposed to be about helping each other deal with the stress that life gives, not adding unnecessary stress to each other's lives. I think, unfortunately, we live in a society, or and it's been like this for a long time, where we've normalized the stress that happens in so many people's relationships. We've normalized a lot of the toxic behaviors people engage in. And we act like, well, that's just relationships. That's just life. That's just the way it is. No, I'm sorry. No. That's how it is when it's an unhealthy relationship. That's how it is when it's an unhealthy attachment, when there's unresolved issues or people are overlooking red flags. Trust and believe there are people out there in relationships where they never experienced this level of dysfunction, okay? Because they did the inner work, they made sure they were in alignment with each other, they did their due diligence. But unfortunately, and this is not to make any of you feel bad if you're going through it right now or have gone through it, many choose partners for the wrong reasons. Many choose partners without the proper foundation in place. Many choose out of fear, out, out, out of... Uh, the fantasy of what they believe this can be rather than the reality of what it is. And that ends up creating this situation where even when the toxic energy and the stress comes about, you keep trying to fight through that because you are so, I was going to use the word married to the idea of being with this person. You know, some people are more married to the idea of being with the person rather than actually married to them. Meaning, like, there are people even who are married, they're, they're not really invested in the marriage. They're invested in the idea of being married. And, and that idea, that desire of wanting that label, wanting that perception, right, is what's keeping them there rather than the love they have for this actual person. But the point here I want to make is that things get really toxic, get really stressful, and... I can't tell you how many times, and this, this happens to men and women, even though I'm speaking to the women right now. You know, I got a channel for men where I speak to men, and I'll do a video just like this for the men. But for the women, a lot of times, you, you, you reach this point where, like, I'll give an example. I'll have a video about how to, you know, how to talk to a man, right, and, and how to have healthy communication. And women will fire back at me, well, you can't talk to him if he doesn't want to be talked to, or if, if he does, he's the one that's always shutting down. He's always walking away. There's nothing I can do. Well, then why are you still there? You know, and, and I know it's it's easier said than done, but for a lot of women, and, and I'm saying, let's not let's take the married folks out of it for a second. Just in romantic relationships, you'll have women who are pointing out all the bad stuff that pisses them off, that stresses them out. And rather than saying, okay, this is a clear sign that this is someone I should not be with, they continue there, I guess hoping that it'll finally turn around or trying to tolerate it. And that is a problem. And so that's why when it eventually leads to a breakup, again, thank God, because that stress was not just affecting you Mentally, it was affecting you emotionally, it was affecting you spiritually, it was affecting you physically, all right? The toll I've seen emotional stress and toxic relationships take on a woman, you, I don't think a lot of you may understand how that, because the body just knows stress, all right? Whether it's stress 
from lifting something heavy, whether it's stress from dealing with someone who's toxic, the body just takes no stress. That stress triggers disease, all right? I have to say this real quick. There's tons of people I've come across who they can be eating right, they can be exercising, and they'll get cancer. Now, we know in this world there's tons of chemicals and all kinds of factors that can lead to cancer. However, what I have seen as a common denominator in these specific types of cases are toxic, dysfunctional relationships. Whether that be family, whether that be romantic, there's something that they deal with on a regular that's extremely dysfunctional and that emotional stress is destroying them from the inside out. So know that that's not something that you should be ongoingly accepting and just rolling with and that if it leads to a breakup, good, because you needed to break free from that situation. All right, so now another reason why a breakup is a blessing in disguise is because it's an opportunity for you to prepare to receive a bigger blessing. What I think people have this, this misunderstanding that sometimes this breakup is just this bad thing happening to them. It's like everything was great, I, I want to be with this person, and now it all fell apart. Whether they broke up with you or something went wrong that caused you to the breakup, it, it feels like an attack on our heart, right? But in reality, in the vast majority of situations, it is exposing an underlying issue or issues that existed. And what happens is we try to sweep those things under the rug, but over time that rug is piling up dirt underneath and eventually everything just falls apart and everything blows up in your face. You know, another quote I like to use is the same red flags you ignore in the beginning are the same red flags that will end your relationship. And so for a lot of people, you have to understand that if something was wrong, and not being resolved, or you were simply with the wrong person, then this breakup is now giving you an opportunity to get things on the right track. Now, I want you to understand something. Bigger blessing, some of y'all may not like this, but I'm just being honest. Bigger blessing can come in the form of you two being able to come back together better than ever and, have, and reconcile and have an amazing relationship or it could be you being able to experience a new love that's truly for you. Whichever one it is, it's going to be a process that includes you doing the work within yourself to position yourself to receive whatever that better is, to be able to nurture that blessing when it comes your way, for you to be able to even recognize that blessing because the reality is that for many of you, you're not just fighting the hurt from the breakup. You're fighting the hurt from years of experiences before that person, before that breakup, whether it be childhood, whether it be other relationships, whether it be disappointments in work, whatever it is, there are things you may have not released this whole time and it's all adding up in this moment and making everything harder to deal with. And for you to now get to that next level in life, You've got to make sure you heal. A lot of people, and I know sometimes the, the thought process is, well, I've seen other people move on and they're doing fine. Or even what's hitting my spirit in the moment is, I have a lot of people come to me, DM me, email me, whatever you see, run, it, run up to me in the street. I have that happen, happen a lot. Um, and they'll say stuff like, okay, we just broke up and they've already moved on, Right. And, and now the struggle is you're focusing on them and now question, did they ever love me? And, you know, how do they move on so fast? Or why are they lucky enough to have someone already? And I literally just recently had a conversation with a, with a guy this afternoon who saw me outside of uh, where I stay. And I explained to him, number one, things aren't always what they seem. All right. Some people move on quickly as a coping mechanism. They're using this individual as a distraction. It's, it's a rebound relationship. It doesn't represent the reality of what's going on with them or what you, you and that individual had. Sometimes, yes, sometimes it is an, it's a symptom of, or it's, it's showing the reality that there was always a huge disconnect between you and this individual, despite what you wanted to believe, and they were able to move so quickly because they were never truly emotionally invested. 
But we don't know what the real issue is. We don't know what's going on. What we have to focus on is us in that moment, how you're going to move forward, how you're going to prepare for better, not to dwell on those things and not to make the same mistake as that individual and find a distraction. I don't want you to distract yourself. I want you to focus your energy on the things that's going to uplift you, grow you, and get you on the path that God wants you on, all right? So understand that now it's an opportunity because you don't have to worry about this other individual in this season that you're in. You get to just lock in on you, okay? You and God, and that's it. Of course, you might. some of y'all might have kids. You might have other responsibilities, so there's still things to consider. But it's still a, a position that you're in now where you can give more energy to self for the purpose of getting to a better place. Not the purpose of being self-centered, selfish, thinking the world now revolves around you, or acting out in that way in a, as a defense mechanism because some people, what happened is they get hurt so much, they develop the mentality of F the world, it's all about me. I'm just going to look out for me and in doing that, I'm going to disregard other people's feelings or the impact my actions have on other individuals. I don't want you to get into that mindset because that's unhealthy. I just want you to get in the mindset of saying, I'm going to pour love into me, I'm going to heal, and I'm going to get to the place that God wants me to get to. All right, so let's keep this going. And now another reason why that breakup was a blessing in disguise is because you weren't experiencing love, you were experiencing an unhealthy attachment. Now, I understand that can be a very tough pill to swallow, especially when we've convinced ourselves that, no, I was in love, this was love, this was love. And I get why you may feel that way. But take it from me as someone who has coached, I've lost count, a ridiculous amount of people, talked to a ridiculous amount of people, heard the stories, seen behind the closed doors of so many people's situations and gleaned so much from it. I can tell you for a fact that most people's situations are indeed unhealthy attachments, not love. When you dig deep enough into the situation, you start to see what's really going on. You start to find, and again, specifically for women, you'll find a lot of situations where deep inside the woman knew this was not the man for her. Meaning, when I say she knew, she felt something in her spirit. She felt her intuition telling her that, but she may have told herself, nah, I'm tripping. Nah, that's just as me being fearful. Like she talked herself out of it. She rationalized past her intuition, but she did sense something. She did feel that or even know that, but she didn't want to accept it. Okay. And the reasons why we develop unhealthy attachments, it, it stems from a lack of healing. But it can be things like afraid to be alone. It could be things like being exhausted with being single. Like there, there's an epidemic, I don't want to say it's an epidemic, but there's, there's a lot of people who reach a point of, I don't want to be single anymore. So let me just go find someone to be, let me just go find the best current option. Not the person who's truly best for me, not the person I'm so deeply into, because that might take a longer time to wait for. No, let me just find what is good enough available right now or the best option that's around right now, and I'm just going to work with it, right? And in order to make themselves feel comfortable or validate their decision, they have to at some point convince themselves that I love this person or I'm growing to love them, which I'm going to do a whole video on growing to love. I don't agree with that, that mindset, but that's what a lot of people attempt to do, okay? And I'm not going to say no one in the history of life has ever been successful at pulling it off, even though I'm very skeptical at saying anyone's pulled it off, truly. But again, that's a different video. The point is fear of being alone, fear of uh, tired of being single, fear of facing family and their constant noise in your head. When you're going to have a boyfriend, a man, a husband, kids, whatever the case may be. Uh, hell, unwanted pregnancy happens and now you don't want to have this single parent household, so you figure, let me just be with this person or marry this person. There's so many different reasons out there why people chose to be with someone, but it wasn't based off of 
This is who I truly am deeply in love with. This is who I have a connection with. This is who I have the strongest feelings for I've ever experienced. That's not what most people are, are having happen in their life or choosing in their life at the moment due to those different circumstances. So the breakup, and, and when you do that, when you choose a partner without that foundation of true love and connection, it's pretty much, um, I, I don't want to say guaranteed because nothing is 100%. But it's pretty close <laughs> that it's going to inevitably fall apart. It cannot stand on that faulty foundation. Plain and simple. Some people are able to pull it off for five years, some 10 years, some 20 years, some even 40 years. But listen, not every 40-year relationship is a happy one. There's some people who say, oh, yeah, we've been together for 40 years. But how many of those years were actually happy? I know of situations where 90-something percent of those years were miserable, not just uh, uh, bad, miserable, miserable, and it was just tolerating each other the entire time, okay? I don't want that for any of you. And so, again, when we experience a breakup and we're struggling with if we, should, you know, trying to either want to be with this person or entertaining that idea, we got to ask ourselves, was this really love? Like, why was I even there? What was truly drawing me to this individual? You know what I'm saying? And, and it has to be about the individual, not simply the situation, because that's another unhealthy attachment. Some people are attached to the situation. Again, some people enjoy the idea of being in this relationship, the idea of a potential marriage, the idea of having a family, the, the perception of people looking at them like, oh, you have a great relationship, even though behind closed doors, it's dysfunctional. I, again, another example, I know people, because again, I, got, I know so many different scenarios, but I know of scenarios where people are on social media posting pictures and everyone's like, oh my gosh, look at this amazing couple, couple goals, all this stuff, right? Lo and behold, nobody understands or knows these people are fighting behind closed doors and literally going through a divorce, literally, while still continuing to post like it's an amazing relationship, okay? It, it can get like that. And so, but some people are, are they, they, they don't want to lose that perception people have of them. And that in itself can keep them in this relationship. Because now it's, well, what are people going to say if they find out we broke up? You know what I'm saying? Now I got to face my friends. I got to face my family. I got to face society. I got to face Instagram. Whatever it is. And some people will try to kick the can down the bucket to not have to face the decision and the reality of this isn't working. I don't belong here. So bottom line is there's all types of different reasons for the unhealthy attachment. And that breakup is an opportunity for you to evaluate that. And if it is an unhealthy attachment, that is for you to now gain peace and clarity from that this is not where you belong and there's better waiting for you. All right. Now, before I continue, be sure to check out my book, Love After Heartbreak, which is perfect for anyone going through a breakup. And even if you're not going through a breakup and you're just watching this video, you know, learning from it. The book is about healing from everything from your past. So those of you who may be single right now, just broken up, or in an unhealthy relationship at the moment, this book is going to help you with assuring that you release all those negative energies, things from your spirit that need to be let go of, right? So that you can walk in your true power, in your true peace, in your true happiness, and get to where you belong, all right? And you'll be able to see things so much clearer once you've healed from the past. So go to loveafterheartbreak.com or click the link in the description or in the comment section. It's helped tons of people. And if you follow the steps, there's specific steps to do in there on how to heal. If you do it, I'm telling you, you're gonna see amazing results. All right, so next thing, another reason why that breakup was a blessing in disguise is because you were never gonna leave without something happening and causing you to have to walk away. So there's something I say to people, I've said it on, on tour a few times, and I'm going to say it now. I want to brace you for it. I want you to listen with an open heart, an open mind, and understand there's a, I may explain what I'm saying. 
So I've said to people before, because many people have been cheated on, and cheating is one of the reasons that lead to a lot of breakups, right? And I've said that for many of you, you needed to get cheated on. It's a good thing you got cheated on. Because if not for something that significant, you weren't going to walk away from someone who was never best for you. Some of you were fighting so hard to hold on to an unhealthy relationship or an individual who just did not fit your life. Because I have to say this, sometimes it's, it's not always about this individual is a bad person. They could be a good person, but not the right person for you. A good man, but not the right man for you. And if you are in the wrong relationship or with the wrong man, despite whether he's good, bad, or whatever, number one, I've seen good people go bad being in the wrong relationship, all right? Even for the woman. I've seen women that, again, they started off great, sweet, loving women, but they get with the wrong person. Uh, there's a quote that says, um, be mindful of getting with people who will drain your spirit. I'm saying it wrong. Forgive me. I forgot what the quote was. But the point is, I've seen people go in good, then eventually turn bad because, again, they're frustrated, they're resenting, they're being mistreated, and now they start to act out in ways where, from a distance, if you don't know the root and all the details of the situation, you're like, yo, they're horrible. But what you don't know is what they've, what they've dealt with this entire time. And yeah, we can say they should have just left, but again, for many reasons, people don't always just leave, but then it ends up becoming toxic and that toxic corrupts them in many situations. The point is though, good or bad, if they're not for you, it's still going to lead to problems. It could still derail you. It could still you still take you away from your purpose because they are not truly in alignment with you, all right? Not, not all distractions look bad on the surface. Sometimes they look like good, normal things, and yet they're still distracting you. They're still pulling you away. You have to be mindful of that. So back to the point of you, you needed to be cheated on. Yes, for some individuals, if not something drastic enough occurring, you just won't walk away. You would have just kept rationalizing, kept rationalizing, kept finding a reason to hold on. But it's like, yo, you did not belong there and you needed a good kick in the butt. Now, yes, it sucks to be cheated on. And I don't wish that on anybody, but it's just a reality. And again, this is where you sometimes we have to look, even look at that as the blessing in disguise in itself because it helped you be set free. Like I said in the very beginning, sometimes you don't lose a relationship. You were set free from it. All right? But I, it's hitting my spirit, so I got to give this quick little story, then I'll move on to the next point. Speaking of being set free, I remember one time I was speaking to a woman. She was married. She was having problems with her marriage. And so it's a long story, but not to get into all the details. She was previously married. They got divorced. I always felt like I wasn't too sure about her getting that divorce, but that's what she wanted to do. That's what she decided. So be it. All right. She gets married to the second guy. The second guy, I knew, I felt deep down inside, this is not the man for you. But again, every adult has to make their own choice. I can't force anybody to choose differently, right? So she marries the man. Time goes on. She finds out the man had kids that she didn't know anything about, all this stuff. All right, but she's still trying to work it through. She comes to me or, you know, through this whole time, I know about these details. Now we're talking about it's getting real rough. I said, listen, I told her straight up, I don't believe this is the man for you. I've never believed this is the man for you. But I'm not going to decide to get a divorce. I, I want you to go pray and talk to God, okay? Ask God how he wants you to proceed. So she does that. She hits me back weeks later. She said, God said, work on the marriage. Now, in my head, I'm like, Man, I really don't think this is the man for her. But if she said, God said, work on the marriage, then by all means, you need to follow that. Cool. So months pass. Let's say two or three months pass. Um, she hits me up again. She's like, oh, things have gotten better. I'm still skeptical. <laughs> right? I'm still like, this isn't adding up because I feel so strongly that this is not it. But I'm like, listen, she said it's better. They worked on it. Cool. The, the most important thing to me was she, she did what God wanted her to do. That's what matters, okay? Fast forward, 
her and her husband got into some argument. She comes home the next day. Man leaves to go be with his baby's mother. All right? And let me tell you, you just don't up and leave to go back to your baby's mother. That clearly was brewing for a minute. And the way that I always perceived that was, you know what? Just doing what God wants you to do, even if it's working on a relationship, even if it's, you know, putting your best foot forward, it may be to set you up to be set free from the situation. All right? Now, that's between the person and God. I'm, I'm not speaking for God. I'm just telling you what I observed and what it looked like to me. All right. And in that situation, she was indeed set free. They were divorced. And then eventually she ended up finding somebody and they're, they're good. And they've been good for a long time, to my knowledge. <laughs> so bottom line is, though, for some people, you, you need something that's going to help you. It's unfortunate, but it's the reality. But it's still in itself a blessing. All right. So a couple more reasons why a breakup is a blessing in disguise. And it's because that individual was hindering you from your purpose. So again, we kind of alluded to it already, but just to give a little bit more context to it, you know, this is, again, I want to stress, it's not always about this is a bad person. It's just about this is not the right person or the bad has not been shown yet. All right. But God knows whether you belong there or not and where this is headed. Or you may, I've seen some situations where people didn't do enough of inner work or figuring out who they were first, and then they figured out who they were while in the relationship or in the marriage, and then once they figured it out, they're like, oh boy, this person doesn't fit. This doesn't match. This doesn't work. And now it's this big conflict. It's this big issue that I've seen destroy relationships, destroy marriages, because now these two people are, they've grown apart. They're literally completely out of alignment. But in, in, from my perspective, they were never really in alignment, all right? Because you weren't really who you were supposed to be or you weren't tapping into your true self or embracing and accepting your true self so you couldn't see clearly that this individual does not fit or you it wasn't strong enough for you to accept the reality of it because you were in denial of self, all right? And once that stops, everything starts to change. And so for a lot of people, they I've seen individuals be deterred, be downright discouraged, uh, railroaded from their partner from walking in their purpose. All right? And it, it becomes harder now, especially if there's kids involved and there's other factors involved. And there's so much more to have to consider that causes people, and I'm not shaming anyone because I understand it, but essentially, when you look at it, causes people to choose their relationship over God. Because when you are in denial of your purpose or what God is telling you to do, because you're so concerned with the people in your life, partners, kids, whatever, you're basically saying, well, it's more important for me to worry about them than what God is telling me to do. All right? And... Again, I don't want anyone to feel bad because I think there's some of you that's going to hear this and feel like that's what you've been doing this whole time. And I'm not trying to, again, punch you in the gut, but I'm trying to be real with you in a loving way and encouraging you to, to be willing to grab hold to whatever it is God is telling you to do, regardless of who's in your life, or to recognize for those of you who are just in a relationship more specifically um, and I hate saying it, but potentially even those who might be in a marriage. Uh, but again, you got to talk to God about it. I'm not, just don't take what I said. Um, but for, again, more specifically for the people who are in a relationship, recognizing that this person just doesn't belong. They are in the way. They are a blockage. For some of you, they are an anchor holding you down. And that's why if a breakup has occurred, it's a great thing. It's a great thing because now you can finally get on your correct path and for and it's on that path that there's so many more blessings that will come your way. For some of you, the door to receiving what will fulfill you, what will make you feel amazing, what will allow you to experience such amazing blessings is you getting on the path of your purpose. That's, that's all it boils down to for a lot of people. All right, so a couple more. And again, these are points I kind of alluded to already, but we're just going to quickly highlight. 
So another reason why it's a blessing in disguise, they're simply the wrong person for you. I've said that, I've said it throughout this video multiple times. And, and I think there's, not that I think, I know there's a lot of people out there who will say there's no right or wrong person. If that's your philosophy, so be it. I don't agree. I do believe there's a such thing as a right or wrong person. We could have a discussion about if there's multiple right ones, even though I'm a, I'm a believer in connection. And I think when it comes to connection, there ain't a whole bunch of different people. Again, when you speak to people who've experienced connection, it's usually once, maybe twice in their life. It is not some reoccurring on with a bunch of people. But understand that how we use words can differ. So how I use connection and what connection means to me may be very different for someone. So they might hear this and say, that's crazy. I connect with all kinds of people. But the connection they're talking about is different from the connection I'm talking about. We won't get into that in this video right now. That's, I got other videos for that. But bottom line is, yes, I do believe there's a such thing as the wrong person and wrong people. I believe most people are going to be wrong for you. When it comes to joining together in a relationship and more specifically getting married to this individual. All right. And so, again, that breakup is an opportunity for you to see things clearly. It's very easy for us when we're in the relationship to get so lost in it and to become blind. We miss a lot of, we get a lot of blind spots. And, and that's why a lot of times you can be in, in a situation and friends, family, whoever, they're seeing things that you're not completely grasping because it's harder for you because you're more emotionally invested at that moment. However, a breakup kind of gives you a moment for some people, if you use it wisely, to take a step back and see it clearly. And also, here's what's important for you to be able to have a clearer picture of this is the wrong or right person for you, especially when a breakup occurs. Because when breakups occur, many people are focusing on that specific issue that caused the breakup. We had this argument, cheating happened, they flirted with whatever it is, right? But they're not looking at the overall relationship. So it's almost like, well, even if it was a mistake that they messaged that, that girl, right? And you're thinking, well, maybe I just overreacted and I can get back with them. Okay, but if the overall relationship, when you evaluate it, was not good, was not healthy, there's multiple issues, right? then it still would not make any sense to get back with that person. It still would be showing you that they're not right for you. Don't get so locked into that specific thing that you're not looking at the overall picture. And on the flip side, sometimes we're so locked into that one mistake and we're, we're ignoring the fact that, no, this individual has actually been amazing with you this whole time. You guys have this connection and maybe out of a moment of fear, of, of just being overwhelmed by this experience, they did something stupid. They made a bad decision. I know some of y'all don't believe in that, but it's just, it's true. It happens. We're humans. We make mistakes. And you got to be able to see the overall picture to understand, is this a good person or a good partner, good match who just made a mistake? Or is this mistake the symptom of someone I just don't belong with? All right. And last but not least, again, I said this earlier, I'm going to say it again. The other reason why that breakup is a blessing in disguise is because whether you realize it or not, you are putting that person over God. And what we have to understand is that if we're praying and asking for God's best, God's will in our life, well, I can tell you his will is not for us to be putting people over him, all right? It's not for us to be essentially, I don't want to use the word idolatry, even though I think you could apply it. But bottom line is we're putting people on pedestals higher than God because our focus is more on them. Our concern is more about them and, and how they feel and what they think rather than what God wants us to do in situations. We're out of alignment with our purpose. All these things add up to we're putting God on the back burner. And again, if we're asking for what God has for us, if we're asking God for God to intervene, if we're asking for God's will, then all that includes a structure that has him at the top and that person coming second. And really, that husband coming second is not really about boyfriend and girlfriend in, in God's world, but that's a whole other discussion. But either way, sometimes we need a, we, that breakup is an opportunity for us to get closer to God, to realign our priorities, to grow stronger spiritually to where 
whether we get back with that person or a new person, we don't make that same mistake. And we keep the structure and the order of priority the way that it needs to be. And in doing that, we will have a more successful relationship. We will ensure uh, a greater chance of us choosing the right or accepting the one who is best for us, right? And receiving that all the things that God has for us in our life waiting for us. Thank you for watching this video. I pray it was helpful to you. Be sure to watch this one over here on the seven reasons why men pull away when things are going good. I tell you ladies to not take these things so personally to where you allow it to damage you, where you allow it to cause you to question your value and your worth because this man 